Hello and welcome to this introductory video on custom scripting with FSOF Transact. In this video, we will cover what scripts are available to you for customization, how scripts are executed by the system, what data is available to the scripts, and how to modify and return the data to the system. There are 11 scripts available to each batch class, including one for each module other than folder import and review. As you can see in this screenshot, the name of each script aligns closely with the plugin that calls the script. In addition to the scripts that you can add to your workflow, there are five scripts that allow you to execute code when an event happens in the validation screen, including adding a new table, changing the value of an index field, pressing a function key, adding a row to a table, and changing the value of a cell within a table. Please note that the plugins that call scripts can be inserted into any module and can be inserted into the work workflow multiple times. For instance, if you are not using the page process script during page process, you can put it at the beginning of the extraction module and execute before code before any extraction steps take place, and then reserve the extraction script for after extraction has taken place. All of the scripts have the exact same structure. There is a public execute object that is called by the system and is passed an XML document containing information about the batch. The scripts that handle changes on the validation screen also receive other information like the currently selected document and the name of the field that was changed or the row and column information for table changes. These allow you to behave different ways according to which field or column was modified. The XML document that is passed to the script contains a plethora of information about the batch, including its name, working di directory, and what its status is. On top of that, each of the documents including in the XML, included in the batch, are included in the XML as well. And you get information like the document type, the classification score, or how closely that document matches its closest trans sample, and each of the index field values, coordinates, and confidence scores. There's a lot more information stored in this XML document, and you can examine this file by navigating to your shared folders, opening the FSOF system folder, and then opening the folder with the batch instance ID matching the batch that we, you would like to examine. Inside that folder, you will find a zip file named batch instance ID underscore batch dot XML dot zip. Opening this zip file will reveal an XML file with the current data for that batch. Any changes you make to the XML document within your script will be reflected in future steps of the batch class workflow. So you can do things like set index fields with a custom value, format data a certain way, or even make web surface calls with the data available from the batch. The possibilities are endless and allow you to customize the batch class however you see fit. That concludes this introductory video to scripting, which covered what scripts are available to, available to you, how scripts are executed by the system, what data is available to the scripts, and how to modify and return the data to the system. I encourage you to check out our other scripting videos, which cover more details on using script scripts to act upon batch class data. Thanks for watching.